Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers and thank you for subscribing. Okay, um, I decided that uh, I got a little bit caught up on the stuff that's coming in for repairs. So I decided to bring my 40 horsepower two-cylinder single car 1992 Yamaha Enduro um, in here and just do there's been some things since I got it running and that was a, several videos ago there's been some uh, details that I've been needing to go over with it I really like this outboard it's a good one simple as they come and just runs good so but it had some fuel hose leaking on it that I just kind of hodgepodge together to see if it was going to run I cleaned the carb on it but I didn't do much of anything else to it so it needed some cosmetics you've got to do the cosmetics you understand you can't just let them go so it had a little things I'm gonna show you a couple things it just really bugs me about outboard manufacturer so um, we're gonna take a look at some of this enduro and then um, what we're gonna do is I tried I tried with all my hearts but I could not get the 25 heaven rig unseized so I've got to pot it out but I want to look inside its guts I want to see what's so bloody hung up so we're gonna part this old I think it was an 83 25 horsepower that was gifted to me there's a lot of good parts on it but the power head and the cylinders ain't one of them so we're gonna get to parting that out and see what that's all about so let's get at it
I need to do some work on this guy. So I brought it in. Haven't started it in a few months. I'm going to winterize it, fog it. But before I do that, you can see this old Tigon fuel hose here is all stiff. And I want to get a fuel, uh, clean the fuel filter. I see some, I don't know, it's pinkish down here and greenish, I'm not sure. So I want to clean that fuel filter. I want to get a new fuel line on it. And then I think I got some motor mount, some lower motor mount things going on down there. I'm not sure the whole thing's moving, so I'm not sure about that. But really good motor. Um, not even supposed to be in the United States of America, um, according to the things I found. Um, if you go to yamahausa.com this motor model number is not listed there um, but here it is in Alaska anyway and uh, boy what a beefy sounding motor and I can't wait to get this thing out and run it on my uh, bay runner skiff I think it's uh, yeah it's a good motor beefy Twin-cylinder single carb, all manual enduro. Really nice motor, but I want to get it cleaned up and get it better winterized. Um, probably will replace the pull cord on the recoil. It's uh, it's looking a little frayed and rough. I just need to clean it really good. It just needs it because it's such a good motor. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do with this guy. My Enduro. My Enduro. Yummy. Enduro. Enduro. Yeah, she's a good one. She's a good one. switch could use replace but I mean it works if you use it as a MLB switch if I give that thing even the least little bit of gas trying to start it in starts with a real high rev, so I've got it turned all the way down now. So I'm just going to do a few things, clean it up, loosen it up. Get it ready for the winter. Get a lot of lube and some corrosion compound on it. You understand us? Yeah, I gotta loosen up. I already loosened the nut on this tiller handle. I want it to get looser. What a nice motor. And if you see right here, it says Avery. And if you look up here, it says Avant. Um, because from what I understand about the motor, it was not for sale as a U.S. model. Um, but I got one, but I want to get it cleaned up. This is one that I've been meaning to go through and get really ready. Um, 
Pride or next spring because it'll be a fine selling motor. So that's what I'm going to do there. I'll be back. Alrighty. Back here on the Yamaha 40 Enduro. And uh, so I got my new fuel hoses run. Um, got everything clamped and now I can squeeze in my bulb and I don't have any leaks. So that's all good and toit, toit. Then I want to show you something that just chats me. It rubs me the wrong way. You know, this is a beautiful motor. I mean, it's a wonderful two-cycle motor. Um, and then they do things, and it just rubs me wrong. I, I, I hate it when I see it. They, they put all this effort into this beautiful two-stroke motor. And then they do stuff like this. Put an old cheap piece of mild steel for the lifting bracket. And that's original because it's threaded and everything. And, you know, you got all this nice aluminum and everything. And then you go put a piece of crap mild steel that'll just, in a saltwater environment for sure, just rust right away. And, you know, and it's not just there that they do this. I mean, like I said, this is a beautiful outboard. Now, look at those two screws right there for the bonnet hasp. I mean, they're just, you know, how much would that have been to be stainless? You know, and there they are, rusting away. You know, just little things like that on a, on a really good outboard just sour me bad. You know? So now what I did is I hit... I hit that, uh lifting bracket over there with my wire wheel brush I just just disturbing the rush of the rust and I did the same on the bonnet screws and then I take this product Cora seal, Coro seal, rust converter, metal primer. Take a little bit of that, and I just take a little acid brush, like a so. Now the thing that you can't do is stick this down in the, the jug. So I gotta find a little something, something. And I will, like I always do. All right, let me dry it out a little bit. I found me a little cup. A cup. Dry it out. And I'll just take a little bitty, 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 bitty bit. Heck, not even that much. Of the core seal. And I put it on my little acid brush and I'll paint this thing up. And it'll turn it a blackish purple color. And I'll paint it. But what it really just, that kind of thing, it, it's just so uncalled for. And it ain't just Yamaha, it's all of them. All of them do it. I'm trying to save 22 cents. You know, take an otherwise wonderful product and then they just turn it into a bunch of blithering rust. All because of a couple couple 20 cent screws, 10 cent screws. I'll wipe off that excess here in a bit. Look at that, look at that inside there. this core 
more steel to work you need to wire brush it first really you need to rough it to get all the scale off there then you can put the core seal on there and as far as this this looks like it might have been brass so i just put some core seal on that and take care of that but man that just you know it's so uncalled for all right so everything's all core sealed up Get rid of the rust. I'm standing. So, I'll come back and once that core seal dries on that bracket right there, I'll come back and squirt a little paint all over that. Same with the, the bonnet screws. I'll go ahead and touch them up. I'll take an acid brush, just a little gray paint, and dab on there so they don't rust away, but there's the beautiful Enduro. Okay, see the globby weld there? This is nothing but a half inch box in wrench that I put in my vise and heat it up, and I bent the wrench, all right, about like that much. Then I welded a bolt to it, and I bent the, I heated the bolt there and bent it at a 90. And this is called OMC Special Tool 322700 for getting at these forward nuts on these 25 through 35 power heads. And that's all it does. This allows you to get down in there and get that on each side. You got to take most of the stuff off, the riser and all that, to get at it. But this tool is what you need. They sell it on boats.net. It's nothing but an offset box in wrench. But OMC, if you go to like boats.net, Crowley's, any of them other ones, they'll tell you. It's OMC Special Tool 32270. Then I take a serrated knife and just finish getting it off. The little teeth on a serrated knife will spin that nut right on off there. There it goes, it's off. That's how you get out those. But oh, looky, 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 looky here. Looky here, look, 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 look. You gotta look. Look at all them good parts. I got power packs, risers, or excuse me, coils, power packs, risers. I got a 1983 25 head with a pretty decent gasket, a carbonator, a kill switch, parts, is, parts, is, parts, is, parts. But now I'm gonna flip this thing upside down on my workbench here and Get that power head off. I'll be back when I get set up. Okay, that's what that core seal looks like when it dries. It just turns kind of black. So, then once it does that, I'm going to take a little bit of paint. Give that old thing a good coat of paint right in that area anyway. Anastas. And this is that uh, metallic charcoal. Hopefully you can see that. Metallic charcoal. Rust-Oleum. It matches this Yamaha paint really well. Paint up that block a little. And paint up that old... Was rusty. Lifting bracket. I don't that look better than a bunch of rust. All right, back over to the 25. It's toy.
Point. Oh, well. For the most part, I think that's about everything. You know what I'm saying? Now it's bang a boom a bang a boom a bang a bang a boom. Yeah, it's all froze up. The gun still might be good if I can get it out of there. I like having them around. Sometimes they come out. Sometimes they don't. The thing is, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You get the ideas. You get the ideas. And then we'll keep this. See? We'll keep that. A little salty, but in good shape. Good shape. You good shape, man. All right, all right, what else we got? Oh, we gotta cut that off. Little Victor Knox action. Cut that fuel line. You know, you know. I cut the fuel line. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Now I gotta cut the grounding strap. You say, you say, why don't you unbolt it? Because I've got a couple billion of them and I don't need it. So I just do that, make it a lot easier. I think we popped its head. I think we might have popped it. It might still take a little more popping, but for the most part, she popped it. That little cotter pin out of there in the shift linkage up. And there she goes. She <laughs> she a head. Not the right one. The other right one. They're tight. Oh, 
stand. Might have to put a little heat. Might have to put a little wacky wacky. Little some of daddy daddy. Let's see how many times I tried this one. After I take my die grinder and make short work out of that. That's a powdery old thing. Is this the strip on the My number. Pretty old vice grips, I guess. Maybe the scripts and a little bit of heat. What do you think? Again? Tell you what, I ain't playing. I'll be playing. Let's do something different. Oh, I barely got enough cord here. wrench on this other one. Let me see. Yep. Apparently I did. Diablo. Diablo and Tuliasis. Diablo. Devil tool. Oh, 
Bara. Bara, bara. Look at this. Um, I doubt it, but you never know. You never know. It's always in the middle that these gaskets get hung up, you know, on a stance. Now you say, why are you worried about that old gasket? Because if I can get it off 100% clean, yes, I will reuse it. Not on this motor, because this motor is shot. But if you put a nice coat of RTV on that, totally reuse it. If you can get them off. Now, being that I got these well, stuck studs, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm sure going to try. Let's see, we were coming up over here a little bit. Ooh, look there. In there. In there. That's a totally reusable gasket. Totally reusable. I need sustenance. Some rough looking nuts and bolts. Rough. Rough. All right. Well, I'm going to keep going with this. Once I get her down closer, I'll come back. Be right back. All righty. I think I got mostly everything apart. Little bit of yuck them in there. Yeah, on a stannis. It's my seal spring. Dum, dum, dum. 
かなうんインタレスティングインタレスティング3はい。